Good day to you, Ninth and O. This is Michael Knight, one of the pastoral interns here at Ninth and O. And we're going to continue our devotionables in hymns. By the way, devotionables are brief devotions for busy people. Today, we're going to start with Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, written in 1758 by Robert Robinson. In 1752, he's going to accept Christ while hearing Whitfield preach the wrath to come. But before that, he was a barber's apprentice sent to London by his mother where he was associated with a notorious gang of hoodlums and lived in a debauched life. But he's going to come to Christ in 1752 and, it, and in 1768 he's going to write this hymn, excuse me, 1758, he's going to write this hymn uh, and he's also become a Baptist minister in Cambridge. It does get altered in 1760 by Martin Maiden, where he removes the fourth stanza of this hymn. And he also, interesting thing about Martin Maiden, is he hears John Wesley preach, prepare to meet thy God, and he becomes saved and becomes a chaplain and a hymn, hymn writer uh, in the Hyde Park area. So 22 years old, Robinson writes his hymn, and pe many people think that this, this prone to wonder, Lord I feel it, is a call back to an autobiography, as it were, to Robinson's early days of debauchery. And so uh, there's obviously very personal for Robinson when he's writing this hymn. But one of, the, one of the great things that is in this hymn that I think we've all sung, and maybe some people have looked it up or been taught, but I always remember, raise, raise my Ebenezer. And I remember singing that and going, I, you know, just, you just, and sometimes you end up running with it. You don't really know what that means. But it's interesting when it talks about raising that Ebenezer, because it's actually straight translated from the Hebrew in our Bibles and ultimately in this hymn. And it goes back to 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, in which the Philistines have, have been judging, they or been in war with the Israelites. And they've been under judgment of God for their unfaithfulness. And Samuel is going to be the first prophet uh, since the judges uh, to come up out of Israel. And he's going to come and pray over this war with the Philistines. And in, in verse 12, he says, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shin and called its name Ebenezer. For he said, Till now the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and did not enter the territory of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. So what is this word Ebenezer? Well, the Eben in the Greek is stone, and ezer is help. So it's best understood as stone of help, um, but ultimately becomes a memorial and a reminder of God's faithfulness even when Israel was unfaithful. And so some have requested uh, that that Ebenezer be changed to something else, and some have changed it to variations. Uh, but I think it's best to keep the Ebenezer as it were. It's what we see in our Bibles, and I think it's best to, to, remain, to remain that in the hymns as a result. Uh, the other interesting word that might not be as natural to us is the word fetter. And when he calls it this idea of fetter, it is actually literally ankle shackles or chains that are attached to the ankles as a prisoner. And so it's interesting how he's going to tie, he says, Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Well, if you have ankle shackles on, it's going to be very hard to wander, to walk away. So he's talking about binding his, not his literal legs, but his proverbial legs to the heart of Christ so that he is less likely uh, to wander away. And I just love that imagery. I love how he used the word fetter there, kind of some dead language there for us, but I think it's great imagery to be reminded of. And then ultimately, in closing, think about Jesus is our Ebenezer. He is lifted high on the rock of Calvary, known as Golgotha. He, be, he became and continues to be our faithful help, especially when we are unfaithful, just like Israel was. And I do want, in closing, read that final stanza. For those who may have never heard it, here's the final stanza that was omitted uh, in 1760. And that reads as, All that day, when freed from sinning, I shall see thy lovely face, Clothed then in blood-washed linen, how while seeing thy sovereign grace. Come, my Lord, no longer tarry. Take my ransomed soul away. Send thine angels now to carry me to realms of endless days. I hope this is encouragement to you to be reminded of what 
Christ has done for us. And I hope you have a great week, Nathan O.